What is going on, everybody? It's Rob Brunson from Walsh Electronic Sales. We're back again with another episode of the Electronic Intervention. Today, we've got something really cool planned. We got Brad Peterson from DigiKey Electronics, who I consider a friend, one of the first people who I met whenever I came into this industry. Really good guy. He's the Southeast Regional Business Coordinator for DigiKey. That's quite a title. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring Brad on. What's up, man? How are hey, you? I'm good. How are you today? I'm doing well. How was your Thanksgiving? Oh, it was beautiful. It was, it was very low key. Just me and my uh, siblings and uh, our significant others. It was it was nice. Lots of food. And then we go. pretty much uh, did nothing. Just kind of sat around and recovered for the rest of the day. How was your Thanksgiving? It, it was pretty good. My uh, so my fiance. It's 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 interesting. My fiance works at Chewy, which is kind of the digi key of pet food. If you oh, will. absolutely. Um, so it's it's a very weird schedule. They never shut down. Um, mm -hmm. So what she ended up having to do, you ha either have to work Thanksgiving or you have to work on Christmas. So naturally, she chose to work on Thanksgiving. She didn't have to go in until a little bit later. So mm -hmm. we just had a two person Thanksgiving. Um, oh. Nothing. I still cooked way too much food uh, than I needed to. <laughs> Um, we're getting married in three months. So I'm, I've now stepped away from carbs. I, I refuse oh, yeah. to eat another carbohydrate until Christmas. <laughs> um, good but it, it, yeah, right. It, it was good. <laughs> it was good though. Um, so tell us a little bit about you. I think most of the time everyone watching, I have a little ticker down at the bottom or something up at the top that kind of explains the company. I don't really think DigiKey needs an introduction, um, but I want to know about what you do for DigiKey and then we'll kind of dive into the website a little bit. Sure. So let me, let me start off by saying that the easiest way to say my job title is RBC. Okay, RBC. RBC. Yeah, so there you go. Is a very, we're a very acronym-focused company. It's so and I, I apologize in advance because I'm going to be using them. And if I if I do, just be like, hey, tell yeah. us what that means. Well, I'll tell, tell everyone right now, before when we were prepping for this, we were looking at the website and Brad was just throwing all these acronyms out. And I didn't know what he was talking about. He was it's like, go probably. click on this. And I said, well, I don't know what that is, man. So, but we've <laughs> got to figure it out. So if anything screws up, it's on me. Yeah, but, it was, sorry. It, it's a real problem. But anyway, so um, I've been with DigiKey for 14 years. Uh, for the last two years, I've been the regional business coordinator covering the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee. So I think my job is really, you know, kind of kind of two parts. So I spend the majority of my time working with manufacturers, reps like like yourself, um, providing information back and forth, trying to find opportunities to work together, um, the supplier contacts as well, just basically trying to grow DigiKey's business within the Southeast. Um, and then secondarily, I'm from an inside out perspective um, for our sales team. I'm the kind of the go to person developing the relationships in the in the territory. Um, meeting with newer customers, kind of trying to evangelize into the DigiKey model, um, and just you know trying to trying to grow the number in my six states. It pretty much comes down to that, right? And, and tell everyone what six states you do cover. So North Carolina and South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Yeah. So it's fine. We when I first started here, Mark and Emmett, who you know very well, mm -hmm. uh, they said well, we cover the Southeast, and I said, well, I'm from South Carolina, right? So I said, right. well we don't cover Florida and that's the Southeast, you know, automatically my brain goes to the Florida Gators SEC. I'm a Gamecock fan. <laughs> so, well, you know, we, we thought about having salespeople in Florida, but the problem is they'll just golf all the time. They don't oh, actually yeah. do anything. <laughs> so, so that's what, that's the same six States that we represent too. So it's very synergistic yeah. for us to work together with DigiKey. Um, well, it's, and you know, my counterpart in Florida, Karen, I mean, the way she talks, Florida is basically three entire markets. I'm sure, you know, so it's, it's massive and it, it takes all one person can handle just to cover that. So oh, I'm sure yeah, she, I'm can, sure. she can keep it. She can yeah. keep it. Although, <laughs> although, you know, the difference between me and, and my counterparts is that I actually live uh, where corporate headquarters is located in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. So yeah. I don't get the Southeast weather. Right. Um, but for the, you know, week, every month I'm in the territory pre COVID. Obviously. Right. But that's some good, some bad, right? Yeah. Like here in the summer, if you go to the grocery store and you walk out to your car, you'll lose five pounds just from sweating. But in the winter, it's actually really nice. I was telling you before we jumped on that it's like 44 here, which is perfect for me. I'm a pretty big guy. So that's great weather. Um, but in the summer, it gets a little bumpy. Uh, but yeah, I, can, I just I don't, I'm not made for that. You know, we've, yeah. we, have, we have four seasons, which is a beautiful thing um, in Minnesota. And, you know, we kind of live for that May to 
August time right. frame, lake season, you know, when the, when the weather's really, really nice, but uh, we just make it work from December to February. That's right. That's when it really gets, uh, gets a little bit brutal to be out here. It's not, <laughs> it sure. hasn't been bad yet. We're, we're in the thirties today. So I've got zero complaints. There you go. There you yeah. go. So I get just just for the purpose of doing it, in case someone has been living under a rock for the last five, six, seven years, tell us a little bit about DigiKey, just a 30,000 foot perspective, and then we'll jump into the website. OK, so I mean, just to I mean, if I'm just going to be on, we're, a, we're an electronic components distributor located in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. We've been in business since uh, 1972. I think what we're well known for is the uh, broadest and deepest uh, inventory in the industry uh 4500 employees uh roughly um you know three billion in sales per year uh 2021 has been obviously a little bit of a misnomer when it comes to that but uh you know we're we're i think our goal is to be the the biggest and most successful high service distributor in the industry and that's that's kind of just the short way to say what we do Sure, sure. So if it's okay with you, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the website and we'll kind of take a look at this. Absolutely. You had mentioned you've redone the homepage a little bit. This is, this is new as of Monday. This is the new look for our homepage, which... That's you know, great timing. Great. It's perfect timing. It's like you knew. Um, you I can tell your marketing department to send me a check because they can <laughs> use this video of a tutorial. So that'll yeah. work. Yeah, absolutely. And so this is honestly, you know, it's still even kind of new to me and it, it's a little bit of a shakeup. It's kind of felt all throughout the world when all of a sudden you go to the DigiKey homepage and it's like, wait a minute, this isn't the way it's been. Right. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time uh, updating our, our uh, search functions, our search engine. Uh, we, I think we want to be the distributor that's the easiest to work with and we want to have sure. the most content um, available on the web. We really, our goal is to be a one-stop shop for anything you need uh, related to you know, electronic components and adjacent industries. So sure. Um, this is, yeah, it's a, it's a first look at it. It's, it looks really good though. I like what, I like what they did. It does look very clean. I'll give you that. Yeah. I like the boxes and how everything's separated. Um, you had mentioned you want to jump to this first and then after that we'll, yeah. uh, we'll kind of scoot around here. But when we were kind of looking at everything, I will, we'll play this video, but I thought this was very interesting whenever we took a look at that. So break this down for us really quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I, you know, I think there's a lot of, because we're so remote, you know, we're located in Northwestern Minnesota. We're a couple hours from Canada. People don't really, you know, I think understand the size of our, of our operation and, you know, what's going on. So overall, I think one of the cool things just to point out is the number of employees, um, 4,500 plus employees, the majority of those being uh, located in Northwestern Minnesota, a huge employer in Thief River Falls and the surrounding community, 3.2 billion plus in sales. Um, you know, something we're really proud of, obviously, is the number of products that we offer on our website. So the number we show here is 12.6 million, but that's probably more in the low 13 million now. Um, and the, the number that's really important there is about 3 million and those are in stock and ready to ship same day. Um, Which is crazy yeah, for, you know, for 2021 standards. I mean, that's yeah. a huge accomplishment. So good for you guys. You know, and that and that number might need a little bit of adjustment in real time based on uh, what's going on in the market today. Right. Um, but, you know, we're, we're upwards of, you know, 2,000 plus different suppliers on our line card. Um, you know, just a massive amount of activity when it comes to orders. And I mean, the number 2.9 million phone calls in 2021 to any company, I think, is mind blowing. Yes. You know, that, but that's that's a very it's a very real thing. Uh, you know, 5.3 million orders purchased per year. Something I think that that we're very proud of is is absolutely our website and and how many and and how much use it gets every single day. I mean, we're talking like a billion hits per year, right? Um, which is just incredible. But the number of customers that we're servicing is is out of this world. Can't thank our customers enough for uh, for the business they're bringing us this year and and every year previously. Um, but I think this year, from what I understand, we're going to uh, probably serve a million individual customers in 2021, which is That's amazing. Um, I mean, it, there's there's a long list of people internally at DigiKey to thank for that down to anyone working in quotes, customer service, our salespeople, and then absolutely our people working in our product distribution center, which we like to call the PDC, there um, <laughs> who, are, who are, you know, now shipping upwards of 25,000 orders a day per day. That's amazing. Yeah. This is the this is the thing that jumps out to me right here. Yeah. Order ship same day, 99 point. That is amazing. 
And I know, and I know we'll get into it, but you know, there, that, that number was definitely a little bit affected uh, in the height of the pandemic, I would say, sure. but sure. for the, but for the most part, yeah, our commitment to our customers. And that's something that we pride ourselves on is, you know, 99.9% order shipped per day. It's uh it's an incredible feat. It's, you know, we were, we were talking beforehand how, you know, I think, you know, when people think it's magic and that, right. it's, it's, you know, it's just, but it's this giant working humming hive of people right. and make it possible for us to meet those commitments and, and, you know, service a lot of different companies in our industry. Absolutely. So we did have a question come in. I want to pull this up. So this is from Bill Daly or Daly. I think it's Daly. Bill Daly. Daly right? Bill. Okay. Bill wants to know, is the release of the new website the same globally today? I would think so. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I would. I'm, I'm not, I, I know that it gets a little bit different where we're, cause we're, I think if you scroll up a little bit, uh, Rob, to the middle of the page, um, we talk about the number of websites. We have four, 45 local websites translated into 22 language. Okay. 22 gotcha. currencies being accepted. So, Sometimes the the rollout is uh, a little bit different depending on on where it's coming out, but I know that we rolled this out on Monday the sixth. Okay, gotcha. So and, yeah, that'll Bill, be something. If you're somewhere else, you would just have to check. Yeah, yeah, potentially. But Bill, Bill and I go way back, back to when AppMel wasn't owned by Microchip, and it's a great guy. He's a great advocate for DigiKey throughout the years. So thank you for joining us, Bill. Absolutely. So 26 currencies being accepted. You guys taking Bitcoin yet? No, um, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think I should have known you asking that question. I don't. I don't think so. Pay, I mean, we just got to the PayPal kind right. of uh, you know function of things. So maybe you know somewhere down the road, it's possible. You never. You know. never know. You never know. So uh, if it's okay with you, I'm going to go ahead and play this video. Yeah, absolutely. I'll go pull ahead. it up for nearly it full 50 screen. years now. Did you? Key is well recognized as both the leader and a continuous innovator in the high service distribution industry of electronic components, automation products, and really anything to do with technology innovation. It begins with the world's largest selection of products in stock and available for immediate shipment. From an unparalleled commitment to inventory for the most critical components to the supporting devices on your board and beyond, or from offering your favorite technology solutions to access to a growing marketplace of products and services, DigiKey is your one-stop source from prototype to production. With 13 million products from over 2,000 quality name brand suppliers, we are continually adding new technologies to remain at the forefront of the latest trends and innovation. We support that inventory with a commitment to service that is unsurpassed. Driven by a unique culture that is our secret sauce, our people truly make the difference. If you innovate, we are here to help. Rain or shine, clear skies or blizzard conditions, even during a global pandemic. We may not be perfect, but we do a thousand little things right each and every day. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. If your project is big or small, every order is important. We ship more than 25,000 packages per day, serving over 180 countries worldwide. We provide same-day shipment with next-day delivery throughout North America, most parts of Europe in 48 hours, and Asia Pacific within 72 hours or less. We offer local websites, language support, and currencies around the globe. We have a plethora of self-service solutions, robust technical content and design tools, visual product search, comprehensive parametric search capability, 360-degree product images, and API and machine-to-machine -machine connectivity to accelerate your time to market and save you money. When you do business with DigiKey, you are partnering with the pioneer and market leader among high-service distributors. We aren't emulating someone else. We are the original. We eat, breathe, and sleep, delighting our customers. We enable the world's ideas. It's a good video, man. Yeah, see, it's, it's funny now watching that because and I, I love the, the content that we make for things like that because it just really does a great job of, you know, again, 30,000 foot view of what we do as a company. Right. Um, but it, they kind of just stole almost like 90% of the things I wanted to touch on the website by covering it in that video. It's a beautiful That's okay. Thing. We'll just, we'll just <laughs> say it differently. <laughs> yeah. Um, so your new facility is amazing. Um, how long did it take you guys to build that thing? So that started in uh, 2018. That's when, and that's when the, the general construction started. The, the construction is now over. Um, but again, you know, affected by the pandemic was the, Sure. the opening of the facility and actually shipping product out of there now. So there's a large amount of testing going on. And I think that the uh, 
that we're I think we're hoping early in 2022 we're going to be able to start using that facility more, migrating some of our product from our current facility over to the new building and uh, and getting that thing rolling. It's it's uh, our current facility is 600,000 square feet. Uh, gotcha. The building that we're looking at in the picture is 2.2 million square feet. So it's only a little bit bigger. Yeah, only only a little <laughs> bit. It makes it makes what is a ginormous building look just minuscule. Right. And uh, it's it's funny. I've I have friends who live on the other side of the building, and they said it always looks like every morning they wake up and look over there. It looks like the uh, scene from Independence Day yeah. when the uh, machines are or the the spaceships coming out of the clouds. <laughs> you know, it's it's massive. You know, I think one of the cool um, kind of just fun stats they talk about is that you could literally fit the Empire State Building diagonally within our new facility. That's how. That's- that's how big it is. You know, yeah, 22, wow. 22 football fields. I mean, that's a lot. It's unbelievable. I bet you the mayor of uh, Thief River Falls office is actually in here too, somewhere, <laughs> or it either got engulfed by it. I mean, there's room for him if he wants to be in there. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, man. So I'm going to go back to the front. And then we kind of talked about looking at uh, these new three boxes right here. And I'll kind of let you take the lead on this one and we'll walk through it. Yeah, absolutely. I think some of the really, you know, important things just to touch on and and something that we're obviously highlighting, it's on the homepage, which is one of the most, you know, probably the most heavily trafficked uh, homepage in the industry. Uh, Just, you know, some tools there on the left for, you know, some of our our folks in engineering kind of to help jumpstart design and and work through products, whether you're talking about, I mean, the number of conversion calculators for design engineers is, I didn't know that many existed. I'm not an engineer, so it's pretty (laughs) incredible. Or, uh, you know, the schema tool where you're actually looking and designing your PCB PCB builder, where if you're looking for small quantity runs on on PCBs, we'll actually do that work for you. Um, you know, some of the reference design library, which is just full of designs from, you know, engineering peers and, and with people at, and our tech, technical folks internally. Um, so if you're looking for something that's already been done before or something you're working on a new project, you could very well find it in there. Right. Um, you know, where I'm more focused would be maybe on some of the the middle here where we're looking at some of the services. Sure. I think one of the cool, so if you would just click on the, the product services link there. Pulling it up. There we go. And so if you just want to scroll down a little bit, I'll kind of just touch on these as we go. Um, this is really just a breakdown of a lot of the value add capabilities that DigiKey has to the distributor, which is something I think that a lot of people don't know about. Some of the newer ones where you're looking at like the antenna builder, um, you know, if you scroll down even further, there's, you know, 3D printing available wow. through our third party partner, Jable, uh, modified boxes and enclosures. If you want to go back up to the top for me, Rob, um, one of the really cool things that we did internally this year, a little, a little further up is the spark tracing. If you were to click on that for me. There we go. And so this is the cool thing. So obviously a big part of our business is where, you know, we definitely cater to the design community and kind of the high mix, mix low volume OVM, OEM space. Sure. It, we're, we're cutting down a lot of reels. So, I mean, a huge part of our business is cut tape and our, and our digital reels, which is our uh, cut tape with the leader and a trailer put onto a, a reel for customers who need that for their build. Sure. Um, this was a very new thing that some engineers within our, our facility came up with, which is actually putting traceability information onto the strip of, cut tape as long as it's eight millimeters or above so you can see the part information that we can put on there manufacturer number digikey part number customer reference so on and so forth it's free of charge it's something we just do for people um because once you start you know cutting strips off everything looks the same so right i thought this was a really really cool advancement that That is cool that i don't even know if people were i'm sure people were asking for it but it's uh just so you know, another way that we try to set ourselves apart by making things easier for our customers. That is cool. So I want to ask you, I saw um, in the video, and then we had talked about this, but with the app, I know DigiKey was working. I don't know if you guys are close or have already finished it, but for me being able to take a picture of a part and then you guys be able to cross it, is that right? Or am I off base on that? Well, no. So I think I think we definitely, I don't know if it's fully available on the mobile app yet. Sure. I know that we have the ability to do that, but I'm just, uh, you know, that's the one portion of the business that I'm not necessarily as comfortable right. with the mobile app is because I use the website, you know? <laughs> I'm, sure. You know, I'm sure most people do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we have a 24-7 technical support. We have a team of, you know, folks just ready to answer the phone or live chat anytime. 
Um, and it's pretty incredible what those people are able to do as far as helping people source um, components, cross parts, things of that nature. We also have a team of folks that are more based on commodity and, and their own suppliers who are, you know, kind of the experts in, in that field themselves. So there's a, there's a team of people available all at all times to right. things like that. Right. So then we have the content box, which yeah, is I think, I think something cool and, and that maybe to look at is with one of our mutual line Schaffner is just the product training modules. Um, this there was the PTM a, that Brad was talking about, yeah, but I didn't know what he was yeah. talking about. <laughs> so yeah, this is a um, this is some really cool content that that supplier provided and also done internally. So I think a cool way to look at this would maybe be looking at one of our mutual lines, Rob. And so if you want to just type Sh a Schaffner in there and search, so basically what it's going to give you is a, is a list of video content cultivated by our team at DigiKey and Schaffner about different series of parts. Very cool. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can filter this. I think if you want to just maybe click on one of those and we can kind of just look at what one of those looks like. Let's do the FN series. Yeah. There we go. Wow. So yeah, oh, so it's it, even got a module. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. So that's a that's a video cultivated by us and the supplier basically providing more information about what was likely when it was added a, a new focus for for Schaffner and then I think just a cool thing to look at and to show people some of the again some of the how deep we get with our content on the website is pick one of those view details okay let's do um, uh, anyone let's do this one cool yeah so this oh yeah look at that hey you got an that's a good salesmanship you gotta yeah, pop it up. right right <laughs> um so just i mean if you just want to kind of scroll down i mean i'm not going to get into crazy detail here but the number right. the, the kind of information that we provide for each part i mean we also look into associated product with each supplier um, other products you might be interested in every single bit of environmental and export classification information product details data sheets um, even up to if available, you know, substitute parts or anything along of that nature is right. all included on the product page. And this is one which uh, we were talking before about the 360 degree product view. And I don't think this one has that. Um, but a large number of our parts, you can actually pull up a 3D model right. of the part and kind of take a look at at the way that it looks in in real time and that was it's a, got a cad file so if you yeah have to take, yeah yeah so we will probably get there with that one but uh you know with uh 13 million products on our website you know we're just, it probably takes, takes a little while takes a little bit of time to get that yeah. done it's actually written so a lot of times when a customer will ask me to say hey do you guys have this product or they ask me to cross a product that they're using and they'll send me the part number right and then they mm -hmm. don't send me the data sheet which is no big deal it is yeah. shocking probably 50,000 of your website views are me just coming over to your website <laughs> to get data sheets because I know that DigiKey always has the data sheet. So yeah. I, I, I use it a lot for my own personal use. Yeah, um, no, it's, it's, uh, it's incredible how much work goes into getting that information and making oh, it available sure. for your customers. Uh, again, it's another one of those things where you know, it's not Elves at the North Pole. It's a it's a bunch of people in Deep River Falls, Minnesota, are spending a lot of time making sure that the information's first of all available, and then second of all, obviously accurate. And right, uh, and uh, it's it's obviously highly important. You know, one of the one of the cool things I hear in my in my travels and and in speaking with customers in the territory is that you know if they go if they they're looking to source a part or they're looking to design something and they go to the DigiKey website and the part number is not available on the website, they won't design it in. Wow. I mean, yeah. that's a good thing for you guys. Yeah, you know, absolutely. <laughs> so it's, uh, and it just, you know, never, I never get tired of hearing that, Rob. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. It's a, it's a good thing. I mean, when you create something that's really easy to use, I think that, you know, we'll get into this a little bit later, but yeah. I think the thing that people love about DigiKey is it's really easy. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. People want when you're a, when you're an engineer and you've got a million things flying at you, you know, you want something that's easy if you need a part. And this is a great example of that. And it's all laid out. So, you know, if you're an engineer, if you're a buyer, you can get to where you need to get to. And it's a really good thing. Yeah, I think so, we were, I think we were one of the first, if not the first distributor to, uh, to go away from the, uh, you're a busy guy. You, like you said, you got to sell parts. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were one of the first 
uh, distributors to go away from the paper catalog, right, um, and move, and, you know, try to move into the digital space, and uh, and allow customers to self serve. And I think that um, we have a beautiful thing set up where engineers are are likely, and and a lot of them are using our website to design their product anyway. Yeah. I think what we've done, especially over the last fifteen to twenty years, is make it so now you they're engineering their product using the content and and stuff on our website and then when it comes to procurement now you can also basically do every step of the project cradle to grave utilizing right, right. our website and self-servicing if if that's the way you choose to do your business and sure and uh it's, it's all very intuitive and and uh if, and if it's not again customer services is there for you 24 7 to help you out right so, well it's very intuitive you know yeah. um so I wanted to talk about kind of the elephant in the room, and I hope that in the next three, four, five months, I'm not talking about this anymore, but yeah. I think it is important to touch on. Um, and I, I want to talk about COVID, and sure. especially from a perspective like DigiKey. You know, we've had yeah. small manufacturers on this show, OEMs on this show, larger manufacturers on this show, but from a distribution perspective, especially one on the scale of DigiKey, how, initially, how did COVID affect you guys? I mean, I think, you know, if we're talking, and I remember vividly, you know, March of 2020, uh, right. you know, I was planning a trip to Huntsville uh, with my manager at the time. And then I remember the Monday before we were supposed to fly out the following Sunday, this, this, the word, you know, COVID-19 kind of entered our vernacular. Right. Um, it, it drastically changed the way that we do things. Uh, you know, number one being that our model has never been to have people work from home. Correct. You know, so so we have, you know, again, 4,500 employees. The majority of those, probably 3,500 to 4,000, are working in Thief River Falls. Sure. Um, probably two thirds, maybe a little bit less, are, are folks that are going into our product distribution center every single day. But then you have all those other people, the people working in quotes and and purchasing and and pricing and things of that nature. Um, so in about a week's time, I mean, we we moved. 2,500 people from working in an office full time to working from home, and many of them That's have crazy. never never worked from home before. Right. I mean, it was a monumental effort by our executive team, our management team, our uh, IT resources. I mean, I'll never forget it because it it felt a little like everything felt kind of normal, but sure. there was still this chaos in the background of right controlled of, uh, chaos. Yeah, exactly. Of of what's going to happen and, and we we all left the building saying hey see you in a couple of weeks see you in a month you know it'll and that was now now we're what you know basically two years coming basically, up on basically basically two years later uh so i mean that was obviously a huge change for us and you know secondarily sure. in the beginning um, not even secondarily primarily probably is we as an essential business you know obviously supporting medical manufacturing right um we still had to send 2,500 people into the building every day. Right. And so the main focus was keeping our people safe. Sure. You know, finding a lot of different ways, you know, whether there was spacing outbreaks or, sure. or, or whatever, like doing things along those nature to keep our people safe, wearing masks, doing things like that. Right. Um, there's some, some great innovation done by our, our engineering folks. They built, uh, like UV lighting tunnels to help sanitize the product. Very interesting. The prop belt. Um, we moved some engineering resources to actually work with the University of Minnesota to make an open source and rapidly scalable uh, ventilator. Wow. I mean, that was something that working for this company, I was very, very proud of. You should be. Um, and so that was that was absolutely incredible. And I think a lot of, you know, even down to make your wearing like um, smart badges to track close sure. uh, contact and things of that nature. Right. It was honestly... Uh, and, you know, and then in the same breath, no one really knew what was going to happen with the market. Right. And uh, I think we were very proud to end up where we ended up at the end of 2020, um, a little bit up over over 2019 after, you know, a year where there was a lot of unknowns and a, and a lot of things that. But honestly, I think it's changed the way we're, we're doing things as a company operationally, maybe forever. Probably so. And, yeah. you know, the thing for you guys, again, this is just from an outsider perspective. <clears throat> you guys were much better positioned than most companies 
to mm-hmm. to navigate this, right? I don't think it was easy for anybody. I'm not I'm not implying that, but because mm-hmm. of your model where everything is kind of internet driven, right? It it did allow you guys. It was a, probably a little easier pivot minus the. 4,500 people that you're trying to keep yeah. safe. That's a logistical challenge. Um, as far as navigating and buying things and looking at the products that you guys have, that mm-hmm. never really changed. Um, right. So it, it it was it's really interesting to me because, you know, you have this huge facility, even if it's 600,000 square feet compared to 2.2 million, mm-hmm. that's still a lot of space to cover and have people in that building, but also trying to keep them spaced out and safe, yeah. right? So that's a, it's a very interesting thing. So I, the next question would be, what is the one pivot that you guys made that you think was one of the most effective things that you guys did? It's interesting because I think that uh, I, I think that the best thing that we did as a distributor was not doing anything differently. Okay. You know, and I, so I think that I think we stayed committed to the model, uh, even though again there was a lot of unpredictability when it comes to the market. I think obviously 2021 is proving that beyond, you know, any year at least in my 14 years in the industry. Right. Um, but I think that the beautiful thing that we did was staying committed to having inventory on the shelf for the customer. Right. Um, really, really focusing on on our, our content on the web, uh, optimizing our search engine, making things even yep. easier for our customers. Um, I think we've definitely moved into a more digital age when it comes to an industry, obviously, right. um, especially with the with, you know, people, again, working from home, um, maybe not having access to their their office, like trying sure. to do things as quickly and easily as possible. And then just I mean, honestly, now moving into 2021 trying to store parts and things like that so i think we kind of doubled down on what the model was already and i think that sure i think that really really helped us and i also think from a standpoint of um you know the opportunity for employees to work from home i think it was a beautiful thing for a lot of people right a lot of people really enjoy that um, especially in the winter time when you have to drive I mean, that's, <laughs> i'm sure that's uh that's a, a beast of a different nature so see so yeah, in north carolina if it's even supposed to snow they Everyone close the schools easy. down for two days. And that's it, it doesn't matter if it snows or not. Yeah. Just if it's supposed to, they shut everything down. And I think I thought it was funny because we got on, on Sunday, we got like probably five to eight inches worth of snow. Right. And I think Thief River was, I mean, a lot of schools will open a couple hours, even just a couple hours late. But I think Thief River might have been just open for business right away in the morning. I mean, <laughs> you know, we just, we just make it work. I mean, the, what you don't have any, if we, if we took snow days every time it snowed, we would never get anything done. Right. And one of the things too, you know, I'm going to pull back this up. You know, you talk about people working from home and it's not just salespeople, right? It's engineers too. So mm-hmm. this tool thing right here that you guys have going on where engineers can use this, especially if they're not in a design lab with their counterparts at the office, they mm-hmm. can use this and work from their house. And this is a great tool for them. Um, yeah. So that's, you guys have a huge advantage with engineers just because of the ease of access that you can, that you can get people. Um, so th- this is a que- this is my favorite question that I asked. So with COVID, there was a lot of stuff going on and people had to make some decisions. You know, I have Mark and Emmett, who I'm extremely lucky to work for. You know, those mm. two guys are great leaders. Um, so my question to you is, what makes a great leader and which leader has had the biggest impact on your life? Yeah, this is a great question. So, I mean, to to answer the fir- first question, I think uh, in my in my experience, you know, I've had I've had some fantastic leaders um, that I've worked with, and I think one of the you know the main some of the main uh, traits that made them successful were you know optimism, being being positive, yeah. uh, putting people uh, in the right position to succeed, um, letting people work within their own style. Uh, you know, not not forcing people into a box, but letting people learn and make mistakes. Um, it really, you know, I but prior to this position, I was actually in leadership at DigiKey for ten wow. years. You've uh, been working for DigiKey since you were seven. Twenty, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> twenty-two. I started when I was twenty-two. I started in two thousand and eight. Um, it was, uh, and I moved into leadership when I was twenty-four. Uh, which was young. That was, that was very young for me Absolutely. To be in, in a position. I was, you know, I was, a lot of people were partying to me were, were older than me and, and some even more tenured. Uh, and I, you know, I spent the first three years working with kind of our feeder group and our, and our 
our newborn salespeople. Right. Um, and then the last seven, I was working with kind of our more established um, customer base and and salespeople. And uh, it was a constant challenge. It was, uh, uh, you know, with, with, I think one thing about our industry, and maybe, well, I know, I know we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but if you're not ready for change, you're in the, you're in the wrong industry. Right. Um, and so I think that the, the people that, that I think succeed are ones who are, they just really want to work hard to put their people in a place to succeed, no matter what that means, whether that means they're not in the right seat on the bus and you're moving into somewhere where they're going to flourish sure. or, you know, taking, taking and setting aside your preconceived notions and, um, you know, letting people work with their own style because everybody's different. So, and that's kind of from the perspective of a sales organization, obviously, where, um, it's very fluid. There's a lot of things going on. The markets are, as again, like it's 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 very cyclical. It's all over the place. Um, right. Things get crazy, and especially underneath the pressure of a a pandemic, I think we discovered how important and vital communication and transparency is. Very important, uh, and especially I mean for a company as large as DigiKey, I think it was. Uh, I don't know if we would have done as well as we did if we didn't have the leadership that we have in place. Um, willing to have some of those conversations and right. and share some of those things. Right. One of the, you know, 40 or 50 pounds ago, I used to play basketball <laughs> in college. <laughs> and one of the best things that my coach ever told me was, all's what you have to do is just be a star in your role, right? Yeah. That's all you have to do. If And then the team, whether it be DigiKey, Wallace, McDonald's, whatever, the team will succeed as long as you are a star in your role. And right. that that's always stuck with me. So if you're the marketing person, just be the best marketing person you can be. If you're a salesperson, be the best salesperson you can be. And then after that, everything will take care of itself. And that's really stuck with me. And I, and I believe that I, I take that as almost law, you know, yeah. and it, it's worked everywhere that I've ever, that I've ever been the people who, who are a star in their role, the team usually, you know, rising tide lifts all boats type of thing. Um, so the biggest leader who had, an impact on your life. If you had to name one person, who's it going to be? You, I'll let you get away with two. But yeah, that's that's tough. Okay. You know, <laughs> if if we're um, you know, professionally, I would say that my my first manager moving into a leadership role at DigiKey taught me more about accountability than any boss. Sure. Um, I've had in my life. And I remember very vividly um, her saying to me at one point saying, charm will get you far, <laughs> but it won't get you everywhere. Right. And she said, you know, she helped me really fill out my toolbox when it came to, you know, things like organization and uh, being being reliable and being responsive and and doing the again, the the, the DigiKey tagline is always doing a thousand little things right every day. Right. You know, and, and that's kind of what she helped me to kind of understand is you can get far on being friendly and talking to people and, and being outgoing and things of that nature. But there's a whole another part of this where you really need to, um, you know, fill out your skill set and do things like that. And then just, you know, just personally, you know, my my parents in general sure. were, were incredible when it came to like supporting me as far as like my, you know, my skills and sure. And, you know, watching me go through things. So, you know, but I've, I've been very blessed because I can't say that again, in most of my, most of my work life or my career has been with the one company, but I've had a right. few managers and um, they've, they've all been incredible. Something in every single one, whether it's, you know, customer interaction or again, like the, the less flashy part of a sure. sales position. So, which is probably most the most important stuff. You yeah, know. absolutely. Right. Like that's it's one of those things where, you know, I, you know, I could sell a, a ketchup box, popsicle to a woman in white gloves, but if yeah. you don't get the order done in time or if you don't do the other aspect of it, it doesn't really mean much. That's right. That's right. So another question that especially for for you and I, we're we're both relatively young people, I would like to thank uh, considering the industry. So why? why should young people want to get into the electronics industry? And then specifically what's appealing about working for DigiKey? So I would say, you know, and, and just to, just to kind of talk about, um, you know, my story, I went to DigiKey looking for a job. 
Um, and that was, and that was it. I was lucky enough that I found a career. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think the, 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 the great thing about our industry is that it's fun. That's right. Um, it's exciting. It changes constantly. Um, I've, you know, kind of got, uh, you know, two stories about when I got in. So, uh, the first day that I come, you come into DigiKey, they put you through basically a full day orientation. Sure. Um, and you sit in a room with your training class and, um, you kind of just go over like what the company is, other things and, and have that conversation. And, and it was a right. group of like eight of us and the guy sitting next to me. So we're, it's, it's very back in these days, it was very casual. So I'm wearing like a, a hoodie and jeans, just very, <laughs> you know, 22 years old, very comfortable. Right. And, uh, the guy next to me is in a full suit. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> okay dude like good for you um but, but then uh the trainer was like hey like this this is uh it was dave doherty who's now our ceo okay wow and at the yeah and at the time he was starting as a director of semiconductor product wow and he gave a little kind of a little spiel about uh you know why we should be excited to be working for a company like digikey why it was such a cool opportunity for us to be here and not a lot of us knew that so from day one, you know, that was really, really exciting. And then the other thing that really sunk in for me was, and this is random, but I was, you know, I was an assigned salesperson for a subset of customers for two and a half years. Sure. And I had a customer in Vancouver, British Columbia that made um, transmitters and receivers for people with autism or people with wow. Alzheimer's, people who are um, like, prone to wandering off and sure. I was I was sitting uh visiting my parents sitting with my mom watching uh extreme home makeover okay and the company that I was working for gave this family with a child with autism you know free transmitters and receivers so if their child wandered and I was like mom mom that's the I work with them like I right. sell parts to that customer so I think it's it's exciting to be however small Sure. A part of all of these products and things that are really kind of, you know, dominating our world in, uh, you know, moving forward and only going to get more prevalent um, moving forward. So uh, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of like we, we talk about it, too. And it's, sure. it's funny that you uh, that you bring that up, because, you know, once you start working in this industry, you don't really look at anything the same. You know, mm -hmm. you look at a gas station pump and it's not a gas station pump anymore. You know, it's right. reed switches and LCDs and things like that. Or you look at, uh, you know, anything really right. that's electronic. And it's just like, wow, I, I see the things in there. And sometimes it's even a company that you're helping sell things to. And to your right. point about a job versus a career, it was uh, whenever I was interviewing with Mark and Emmett and trying to talk him into hiring me, I... Uh, I, I used the term job and Emmett said, no, this is not a job. This is a career. Yeah. And, it, it, and I, I didn't really realize that at the time. I just kind of sat back and I said, you, that makes sense. Um, and it is a career and it's a great career. And I've had, I've had a lot of fun the last two years. It's been a little, it's been a little crazy because of, cause of COVID, but ultimately it's like I talk about with the COVID stuff. I think ultimately it'll make us all, better salespeople or better at our job in general, whether you're in electronics or in fashion, doesn't really matter. Right. I think long-term it'll make us better at what we do. Um, so I wanted to talk about just some fun stuff with you. Sure. The first thing I wanted to ask you guys, hold on, let me change the background really quick. Okay. Um, you can't really see it because we're blocked here, but behind there is a Detroit Lions logo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but I wanted to just see if you guys are going to actually win tonight against the Steelers. I, you know, I'll be honest with you, Rob. I've been avoiding you since the Ravens <laughs> beat the Vikings. That was a brutal game. That was a um, great game, though, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, it was not my my whole plan was to show up on on your show with my Vikings hat, my Eric Kendricks jersey, and my Viking hoodie, ready to just, you know. But at the end of the day, you see that guy back there? We have number eight. We have <laughs> we have one number eight, and you guys have another number eight, who's still pretty yeah. good, but he's not as good as our number eight. So Yeah, you know, that's uh, – and then Sunday was – we stopped – we actually stopped. I go to my brothers to watch the game, and we stopped watching at halftime. No. And then I, uh, I got a little – 
curious. So I started checking the score. I'm like, oh, wait, like, we're coming we're back. This is, this is great. And then yeah. um, I don't know what happened on that last play. It, uh, yeah. It's just been – for you guys, it's been rough just because you have the Dalvin Cook injury last week, and then you turn around and Adam Thielen gets hurt this week. So mm. it's just – it's and it really hurts me because I'm making playoff pushes in a couple fantasy leagues. And I went and <laughs> traded for Adam Thielen in a lot of leagues oh, because people thought he was decision. old. Yeah. Yeah, people usually thought he was old decision. and washed up, and I was like, okay – Adam Thielen's the only player in the NFL who'll get two targets and have six touchdowns. Yeah. So I'll take him. Um, I think I think they're going to win tonight. Um, I think so too. Steelers because, just can't score. Yeah, because well, also I think because they're setting us up, they're setting up Minnesota fans ultimately just to be devastated at the end of the year. So they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna get back up to like seven and seven or eight and seven yeah. or something like that, and then they'll just collapse. Yeah, Minnesota um, is the best at scoring 35 points a game and finishing seven and ten and just miss, missing the playoffs. <laughs> but <laughs> but Justin Jefferson's incredible, so yeah. at least you guys have him. So we that's have a, and you know and fun. Kirk and Kirk Cousins is having a great year. I'm not. I can't even really. It's just the, our defense is awful. Yeah. Um, our play calling's terrible. I think our coaching isn't great either anymore. So. Um, I don't know, man. I'm I'm no expert. I know it's been a brutal, brutal uh, 2021 for as far as that's concerned. And let's just stop talking about it because you're hurting my feelings. <laughs> so I so I always play this game with when people come on, and we do these tier makers, and I'll and I'll post them to social media, and it's just a little fun way to wrap up our interview here. Sure. Um, what I thought we would do is I thought we would rank Christmas movies because Ooh, okay, I love it. Getting the holiday cheer. It's actually really funny. My my fiance is she thinks it's so bizarre that I love Christmas. I'm not really huge on any other holiday, but I love Christmas. So mm -hmm. I really wanted to go get a Christmas tree. And yeah. she was like, No, we don't need to do that. Well, it was just us two. We're going back to South Carolina for Christmas to see our family. We don't need one. So I'm like, okay, well, let's just go to Walmart and see if they have like a fake tree. Mm -hmm. So uh we go up to Walmart and um we get like a four foot fake tree and man, we set it up last night. It is the most terrible, sad looking thing you've ever seen. I mean, it's, well, did you, Hey, did you see mine? I mean, that's what me, I'm rocking. Like, let me pull you back up here. That's beautiful. I, yeah. That's it's a beautiful. Uh, $20, $20 Amazon tree. It was beautiful. Uh, I got, I got a lot of, uh, we were doing, you know, obviously, uh, being, uh, working from home. I'm on right. the webcam basically all day. And, and a lot of the, ladies I work with were like, where's your tree? Why aren't you decorating? What's going on? I'm like, well, I guess that I guess at 36 years old, I'll get my first Christmas tree. And I just, I picked out that one. So whenever I was, uh, whenever I was in college, me and my roommate, uh, lived together and, um, I got a star, a blue star Wars Christmas tree that was probably 18 inches tall. And on the top was an Obi-Wan Kenobi bobblehead. So that oh, was my that was my Christmas tree for the duration of college. Um, so pretty I interesting. Love I love so it. what we'll do is we'll do like 10 of these and kind of move through them. Um, sure. So we have the, I actually didn't make this. I usually rename them because uh, they're not as clever as I would like them to be. But this is actually really well done. Top of the nice list. Yeah. Ho, 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 horrible. I mean, that is content. Um, the last so, one's not water trash. Yeah, not water trash, but this person is clearly as addicted to the internet as I am. So they yeah. took the time to actually do this. So I'm going to start and I'm going to go with the best Christmas movie of all time, which is Bruce Willis and Die Hard. Oh, no. It's the best Christmas movie ever, man. Oh, this is. Welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> I, I, I love that. This is an argument uh, waiting to happen, but I'm just going to move on. We can talk about that later. Um, Okay, let me look here. Oh, you you know, I'm I am a, I'm an elf guy. I'm okay, an elf elf, guy. elf is fantastic. Yeah, I would put that right up at the top. I don't know if you saw, but Will Ferrell in a heroic move actually declined to do an elf too. I appreciate that. Yeah, they offered him like a ton of money, and he looked at the script and he said, "This script is horrible. I'm not doing this." And mm -hmm. I hate sequels with stuff like when they came out with Anchorman 2 I was so sad because yeah. some movies should just be left one hit wonders and they're yeah. awesome you just so, lose the magic you lose right. the magic once you get into the second one 
That's right. So Ooh. I'm going to say, I'm going to take one that I don't really enjoy just because I didn't think it was that funny. I'm going to go Bad Santa. Okay. It, it's not the best. It's not ho ho horrible, but it's not the best. Um, Billy Bob Thornton is just not that funny to me. So, well, see, and I, I think I what I liked about him in that one is I think that he's not that funny, and that was yeah. what was great about it is he was that's, just like, and it was a little point. there was some shock value, you know, it was yeah. like one of those things where it was, um, yeah. But I, I don't, I, I think it, I'd put it in the all right category, but I'm, I'm with you. Okay, so um, now it's to you out here. Um, oh, 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 so uh, this is on upwards on the list for me would be the nightmare before Christmas. Yes. Fantastic. That is, that is either top, top tier, second tier for sure. There it is. Yeah. This is, I'm going to, uh, do we agree? It's top of the nice list. Yeah. I'd agree. Tim Burton movies are awesome. Oh, incredible. Yeah. My favorite one is nine. Have you ever seen the movie nine? Yes, I have. That's a great movie. It's Underrated. Good. Yeah, Absolutely. So let's see here. So for me, I'm going to go one of the ho-ho horribles. I'm going to go Jack Frost. Ooh. Dennis Quaid playing a snowman is not something I'm interested in. Okay. Fair so, enough. Fair and enough. The, the, the CGI is just, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, I kind, mean, of, it's kind of scary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a, a horror movie called Jack Frost that, um, ooh. It's kind of the same, kind of the exact same thing, but it's, you know, the opposite end of it where it's not heartwarming at all. Right. <laughs> right. Um, oh, man. Let's see. Oh, the, okay. So I was going to be, I was going to be sad if this one wasn't on here, but the Santa Claus, that's, that's probably in the second tier for me. Where is it? Down at the bottom right there. Not the right one with Martin Short. No, left. Right. The one with Tim Allen there. Oh, uh, right here. Left. Yeah. Yeah. This is a good one. You want yeah. a top tier? I would, I would put it in, in, I'd put it in top of the nice list too. I love that one. There we go. No, that's the wrong one though. That's Kurt Russell, buddy. Oh, sorry. Where is he? <laughs> I have to imagine it's down. Oh, right there. here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I see him. Yeah. I, I don't know what, a, I think that's I that Netflix movie with Kurt Russell. I will not watch that one. I don't watch Netflix movies. I like I watch Netflix shows. Netflix sometimes Netflix is just a little oversaturated. I have been watching okay. some stuff on Netflix that's pretty good. I actually I watched the black. I don't know if you ever seen the blacklist with like yeah. Raymond. I watched that. It's like nine seasons. I watched it in like three weeks. Kind of depressing, but I was just like, I'm addicted to this show. And my fiance was like, Are you watching these episodes without me? And I was like, I am, and I will not stop. So <laughs> I'm sorry. So this, I'm going to choose this one because this is the one that my mom used to love watching. Sure. And National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. They are funny. They're funny movies. They're more of like 90s comedies, but yeah, it's I'm funny. Almost, I'm, I'm always scared to say that I like that movie, but it's, right. it's probably not top five for me as far as Christmas movies are concerned. That's fair. You I'm going to put it, my mom might be watching this right now, so I'm going to leave it up oh, here. She's a... She's a very strong Italian woman. So if I don't leave it up here, <laughs> she'll call me and uh, she'll she'll scream at me. So people are people are passionate about that one though. You know, oh, if you yeah. tell them you don't. You just, I mean, I've seen it all over social media. They're like, if you don't like this, you can just get out of my life. And I'm like, okay. Well, <laughs> it was a good movie. It's just not up there for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna call. I'm gonna uh, narc on myself here. Okay. Love Actually is an incredible Christmas movie. I got to be honest with you. I've never seen that. It is beautiful. Where is it? Is this it? Uh, where'd it go? It's uh, it's over to the left there. Third in from the right on that same column you were just on. Down, 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 down. Oh, uh, right here. Yes. So where that is it is, going? Is it great? I was getting the great column. Okay. We're, we're filling up top of the nights list, and we just need to fill out some of these categories here. So I will, I'll put this on my watch list. It's a it's a romantic comedy, Rob. So I'm just I'm a just little rom com. It. It's a little bit of a rom com, but it's a beautiful story. It's funny, it's heartwarming. It uh, I love that movie. I'm not afraid of a rom com, Brad. I'll, I know. Uh, I, I'll, I've, I'll I've, take it head on. I just wanted to warn you because I you know I didn't want you to make any. <laughs> Do you know what's surprisingly good? Krampus. See, I actually liked Krampus too. I liked it a lot. I think it's all right. Yeah, but it's not a bad movie. No, my girlfriend it's, loves horror movies. Yeah. And, you know, so we watched that one together and it's 
you know, it's it's like that alternative Christmas vision. That, right. Uh, Which is fun. You know, most people want, you know, the eggnog and the presents under the tree. And I'm like, give me a give me a demon Santa from wherever he's from. It's a beautiful thing. So here's a fun story. I actually had eggnog for the first time ever, like three weeks ago. I, I tried it for the first time last year. Yeah, I was so freaked out by it just because it sounds gross. Like eggnog just eggnog. sounds really distasteful. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll break. And I started asking it. people and they were like, well, you need to go get the Southern Comfort eggnog. So I Ooh. went and got the Southern Comfort eggnog and it was actually pretty good. Yeah, it's just something, the word nog made, yeah. me, made me question it. Right. Um, but I mean, it's just like, it tastes like, you know, cinnamon milk or, you know, it's just like, and it, it's like it, you put cinnamon toast crunch in a bowl of cereal and drink the yep. milk. And it kind of tastes like cake batter too. Yeah, absolutely. I was like, it's kind of like a cake milkshake in a way. Um, let's see here. I'm going to do the night before. I enjoyed this movie. That's I'm going to put this in. I'm going to put it in all right. I don't think all it's right. great, but it will make you laugh. Absolutely, it will. That's a that's the kind of, you know, it's a 20-year-old. You're yeah. in your 20s still pick, but I, I get it. I thought it was funny too. Well, it's like I tell my fiance all the time. We might not be the smartest generation, but we're one of the funniest generations. <laughs> I agree. Well, again, I'll agree with you because I think we're both millennials. But, yeah. uh, um, I, you know, I apologize to anyone not in our generation who's listening to this. Um, you guys are two, smarter, but we're funnier. So take yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. There's two that have to be, for me, somewhere near the top, and that's Home Alone. And how the Grinch stole Christmas. Okay, so which one though? Home Alone three is awful. Yeah, that's that. You can put that in the whole ho, ho, horrible or the right. Okay, good. Well, I agree on worth, that. That's not worth uh, anything. But Home Alone um, two and Home Alone are both very good. Well, I mean, they're both up there for me. That's my childhood. Yeah, my childhood. I agree. We're gonna put. I'm gonna put Home Alone, the OG one, in the top mm -hmm. of the nice list just because it's a classic. Yeah, and then we'll put Home Alone two here. And then right. when you say how the Grinch stole Christmas, are you talking about the cartoon version or the Jim Carrey version? It doesn't matter to me. I, I honestly, I loved, I mean, who's better for that than Jim Carrey? I love the Jim Carrey. My yeah. favorite quote from it is he, when he's like, well, what will I wear? Yeah. He's trying to decide where he's. <laughs> super meme, super memeable movie. Yeah. It's no a, it's there. a great one. So I gotta let's, think of, uh, you know what? This is a pretty good one. Absolutely. Jingle all the way. I'm going to put all right. Yeah. This is. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger's best performance. Oh well, yeah. I love the I love Kindergarten Cop. That one that makes that movie makes me super happy. But Jingle All the Way is great too. It's a good one. Yeah, and Ter good Terminator's one. obviously good. Well, I mean, yeah, we don't need we don't even need to go there. That's uh, I gotta think of a bad one. I gotta look it through here and find one. Trading Places is a is that. You get real loose. People get real loose with Christmas Christmas movies. Oh yeah. Well, what about Christmas Story? Well, here's one I can tell you for free that Drake and Josh Christmas is probably terrible. <laughs> I've almost, never seen. <laughs> that almost hurts me because you know I was a fan of the, especially my little brother, was a huge fan of the show. And you know I'm a, I'm a big guy. I was a big kid, and and this was actually that looks like teenage Josh Peck when he lost yeah. weight. So it's probably awful. Well, we're going to leave it in the ho ho horrible. Yes, fair enough. It, ha it has to be there. So A Christmas um, Story is another one. It's like Christmas Vacation for me. It's where I like the movie, but people, you know, it's like it's on TBS for 24 hours a day over Christmas. Time that's what home. I was about to say. A Christmas Story is almost to the point of cultish. Yeah. Like people watch yes. that like it's a part of their ritual. Mm -hmm. So the Christmas Story, we're going to leave it all right. And if someone I'm, gets I'm triggered by that, they can DM me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see here. So Frosty the Snowman also very all right. Yeah. Um, what was the one with like the puppets? Is this it with like the little character? He was so scary. The like the little elf guy. Oh man. Whoa. Are you talking about? No wait. This is talking about Rudolph. I think it is Rudolph with the little, yeah this little guy right here. Yeah, that guy. God, He's nightmare that, fuel. Yeah, it's freaky. Yeah, nightmare Absolutely fuel. Freaky. There's a lot of those ones where I don't, I you know, like Miracle on 34th Street, It's a Wonderful Life, like Rudolph, like the nostalgia picks. Yeah, kind those of things. Are easy. Yeah, those. I mean, those are those are easy ones. I'm I'm looking through some. There's a lot of ones I haven't seen. The Polar Express was great. That is a good movie. 
anything with Tom Hanks is awesome. Here's Bill. Him. Bill came back and said, hey, Brad, eggnog seems odd to you. Then how do you do uh, with the <laughs> Thief Will Fall staple of beer cheese soup? I don't. I don't. There, I, uh, there you have it, Billy. It's you know, it's 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 okay. It's it's one of those things where people always say like you got to put it's the beer cheese soup with some popcorn, and then okay. you talk about it's life changing. But to me, it's just like beer flavored cheese on popcorn. Like it's never been, it's never been my thing. Interesting. That is a great question though. He's, that's a fair question too. Yeah. All right. So let's do. Let's each pick one more, and okay. then I'll post this. So. Okay. Let's let's so make pressure. it a good one. So much pressure here. I didn't know Gremlins was considered a Christmas movie. And see, and this is and this is where we go. We're gonna go if we're gonna talk about Gremlins. We gotta talk about Die Hard, Rob, because it's the same premise to me. It's a, um, <laughs> it's yeah. a movie during Christmas, <laughs> and there's some Christmas elements to people to say it's a Christmas movie. But does Gremlins have Bruce Willis? No. Not okay, that, right. not that I'm aware of. There you go. Case closed. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, I just want to pick out something that I thought was bad because we don't That's have. What I'm trying to look at. Ones. Um, God, I, I, I'm too forgiving when it comes to movies. I guess. I mean, I, I think the Santa Claus Three is obviously an easy pick for something that was bad. It has to be. I've never yeah. seen it, but my goodness, it looks terrible. Just awful it looks like the dis that looks like the boogeyman from don't look under the bed from you know, the disney movies martin, martin short is great but you know everybody misses everyone i, I would say another one is daddy's home too i like, saw that and i was like i don't know what that is but it looks really bad again it's the one one where they shouldn't have made a sequel yeah they shouldn't have made a sequel to it if so you I, oh, I mean there's a haven't seen thing we'll ignore the haven't seen thing but i could put a ton of these on there oh yeah for sure yeah so let's see here. I'm going to pick a bad one too. I'm going to pick this Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer one just because the little elf kid traumatized me when I was a child. Yeah, it just freaked me out, man. So that's it. So I'll I'll put this on the uh, on the internet and it'll be there forever. Oh, so, perfect. No <laughs> yeah. um, well, hey, man, this has been a lot of fun and I, I really appreciate you taking the time to do it. I know you're a uh, I know you're a busy guy. So one more time, just kind of tell people, you know, DigiKey, obviously, I think everyone knows it's DigiKey.com. That's not yeah. anything too crazy. Um, you guys can go check out all the new stuff. Um, and Brad, I mean, people in the territory know you, but is there anything else you want to say? Yeah, Rob, I guess, you know, when we were, and I, I maybe missed this when we were talking about being young in the industry, um, but just to just to circle back, or back, back around on that, I think what you're doing with the show is fantastic. I Thanks, think uh, some of our interactions and working with Wallace Electronics, um, I think that mixture again of the, uh, the the youth and sort of the old ways, you know, where you're dealing with, especially now, not being able to see customers as often. I think some of the things you're doing with, you know, digital marketing and and moving forward is fantastic. And, and shows like this to kind of bring everyone in and just have a, 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 a light and positive conversation about, things happening it's a beautiful thing so i'm very happy that you asked me to do the show and uh i can't wait to see where you go with it it's, it's a fantastic thing you're doing so thanks, thanks for man i really out. appreciate that i really do um well good luck tonight i hope the vikings win i thank really you do very much. i do um thank you i appreciate it yep and i'm sure we'll talk to you later if you don't mind just hang out in the lobby real yep. quick i'm gonna wrap this up and we'll uh we'll catch up that's okay, brad peterson good. everybody i appreciate it man all right, guys. Thanks for tuning in again. A lot of fun. Really appreciate it. I'll upload this on YouTube so you can check it out whenever. Again, digikey.com. I don't really need to promote them very much. You know where to find them. Um, as always, I'm Rob Brunson with Wallace Electronic Sales. This has been the Electronic Intervention. If you guys need anything, you know where to find me. Take it easy. Thanks everyone so much for watching the stream. It's Rob Brunson with Wallace Electronic Sales. We want to provide you and your company with quality and competitive solutions. We don't care if you're a small OEM, a medium-sized OEM, or a large OEM. We have solutions that we can provide to everybody. Feel free to drop me an email at rob.brunson at west-inc.com. Again, that's Rob Brunson at west-inc.com. You can also check out our full OEM line card on our website, and that's at west-inc.com.
west-inc.com. Again, that's at west-inc.com. Thanks so much again for watching the stream, and we look forward to talking to you soon.